It's been a long day. We all feel, I believe, tired. I feel physically and spiritually exhausted, I'm sure. Many of you, if not all of you, feel that way. We have fasted, we have prayed intensely, we have stretched spiritually, we have felt things that were challenging, difficult, broken. We have journeyed to places both high and deep. We have reached out to heaven and delved deeply into our souls. We have opened our hearts, expressed our innermost feelings. We have confessed, we have pleaded. We have confronted our fears and anxieties, acknowledged our remorse and regret. We ask for forgiveness. And we also embraced our dreams and our hopes and our aspiration to be better and to become more whole. We're now coming to the end of this journey on which we have been together, this Yamim Nuraim. It's truly awesome, awesome and awe-inspiring days. Every year, as the sun sets on Yom Kippur and we approach Neila, the same questions arise within me for myself and for all of us. Every year, I ask myself, have we really made teshuva? And if we made teshuva, are we returning somewhere? Are we returning home? Where is home? Is it a new place in the soul? Will we feel that the burden of regret has been lifted? Have we achieved reconciliation? Was a decision born within us? Will we be able to open a new page? Will we live differently than we have lived until now? Our home means that we will return to the same way that we were yesterday. Is a new wholeness being born now in us? This year, as the doors of this Yom Kippur close and the doors of a new year open, I believe, I am sure, that many of us are asking ourselves, can we really hope for a better year? Hope is definitely not a given these days. We desperately want to hope. But who can delve into hope genuinely and wholeheartedly without apprehension. I invite you to turn in the booklet of poems to page seven. It's the poem on the second half of the page. This is a poem by Gali Ravitz. She's a poet, a therapist, and a yoga teacher. She made Aliyah from Argentina and she lives in Ganetikva near Tel Aviv. Horizon. Zot kufa she kashe le daberba al ofek. Nidme she en kaze ba ofek. Uf chol zot, kshani otsemet enai ba laila, lifne ashena, ani nizkeret ba chalomot sheli. ובמקומות שרציתי להיות בהם, 
בלעדיי, אהבותיי, ואני נעשית קלה כמו שחף, נוסקת גבוה גבוה, מייצרת לי קו, ועפה לכיוונו. This is a period in which it is hard to speak of horizon. It seems that there is not anything on the horizon. And yet, when I close my eyes at night, before sleep, I remember my dreams and the places I wanted to be in, my children, my loves, and I become weightless like a seagull, soaring very high, drawing me a line, and fly in its direction. Indeed, who can speak of the horizon? Who can see the horizon with so much horror, sadness and bewilderment? And as we hold so much concern about what might come our way or our world's way. But the poem says, Uvecholzot, and yet, like the poet, when we close our eyes, we all hold vivid dreams that are very much alive. In those quiet moments, perhaps at night, when we shut, shut out the day's activities, the news, and our anxieties, we go to the places we long to inhabit. For a moment or two, in our mind, we soar high above the chaos below, and the horizon sometimes appears. At the conclusion of this poem, I want you to look at it again. It says, like a seagull soaring very high, drawing me a line and fly in its direction. In these last couple of lines, something truly compelling occurs in this poem. The poet doesn't simply say that soaring through her memories and dreams like a seagull, she sees the horizon. Instead, she draws a line and sets her horizon and points herself toward it. The poet is intentional and determined. She defines her horizon and she commits to moving in that direction. She takes ownership of her own path. She shapes her future rather than passively waiting for things to unfold. This is the essence of hope. It is not merely or merely wishing, but rather the commitment to move in a desired direction. It is a choice. Hope is a choice. It is leaning into what is possible. I know when we leave this house of prayer this evening and go back to the world out there to begin anew, there will be many moments when it will feel impossible and overwhelming. There will be many moments when we will encounter fear and disappointment, when we will feel discouraged and trapped in doubt, questioning our ability to rise to the challenge. It will be often difficult to hope. It is in those moments when we need to remember, as people of faith, that we are not alone. That sometimes hope, strength, vision, courage come from somewhere else, from someone else. Where hope fades, prayer begins. And prayer draws for us a new horizon. I want us now to turn to the last poem in the booklet on page 8. Many of you know this beautiful poem, If It Be Your Will, by Leonard Cohen. If it be your will that I speak no more, and my voice be still as it was before. If I speak no more, I shall abide until I am spoken for. 
if it be your will. If it be your will that our voice be true, from this broken hill I will sing to you. From this broken hill all your praises they shall ring, if it be your will to let me sing. From this broken hill all your praises they shall ring, if it be your will to let me sing. If it be your will, if there is a choice, let the rivers fill, let the hills rejoice. Let your mercy spill on all these burning hearts in hell, if it be your will to make us well and to draw us near and bind us tight. All your children here in their rags of light, in our rags of light, all dressed to kill and end this night, if it be your will, if it be your will. This poem, I believe, is so deeply religious. It is really a prayer. I had not heard the song in many years. In the midst of all this brokenness, recently, a few months ago, a dear friend from Israel shared it with me. And it reached me so very deeply, I was in tears. I thought to myself then, when I heard it, this is an Eila prayer. And so here it is in Eila. This is above all a prayer of submission. If it be your will, as we move into a new year, it doesn't always have to be about my will, about our will. Perhaps we can sometimes yield to God's will. In this prayer of Leonard Cohen, there is stillness and silence in the beginning. And from the silence, the request for permission to sing the song that emanates from the human spirit, from the broken hill, from the broken hill on which we all stand. In his beautiful book about Leonard Cohen's songs, my friend and colleague, Rabbi Aubrey Glazer, writes the following. In the celebrated teaching of Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlav, there is no heart as whole as a broken heart. In the chasm of this desolation, all that is left is the possibility of prayer. The possibility to pray for the possibility of prayer. Our finitude is such that even the song of praise can be offered only from the broken hill, the hill ravaged by transgression, indiscretion and duplicity, the glow of faith ensnared in the shadow of doubt, the faith of truth veiled in the mask of untruth. But the possibility of possibility that prayer represents, as impossible as it might seem, has the power to heal. In this prayer of Leonard Cohen, there is the vision that we find in the Psalms about nature, that the rivers may fill and the hills rejoice. There is the fervent plea for mercy that we all carry in our hearts right now. Mercy for humanity's burning hearts in the present hell we are living through. And the song asks God to draw us near. To draw us near. Al tashlichenu milefanecha, we just said. Al tazvenu. Don't abandon us. Al tilchak mimenu, do not be far from us. Do not abandon us. Rather, he says, learn not go and bind us tight. And then he talks about the rags of light. The Torah says that God made for Adam and Eve garments of skin. But the Zohar, it's called Kotnot Or. Kotnot Or with Ein means garments of skin. But the Zohar says don't read Kotnot Or with Ein, read it with an Aleph. Kotnot Or, garments of light. God made for us garments of light. 
These garments of light have been torn to rags. Yes, they are torn and imperfect, but they're still made of light. Oh God, please expand our light. End this dark night. May the dawn be near. Leonard Cohen wrote the song in 1984. In 1985, he performed it in Warsaw. At that time, Poland was going through social and political turmoil. The government had imposed martial law and the solidarity movement. Lech Valenza was on the rise. Leonard Cohen introduced the song with these words, which resonate so much today. I don't know which side anybody's on anymore, and I don't really care. There's a moment we have to transcend the side we're on and understand that we are creatures of a higher order. There are on both sides people of goodwill that is important to remember. Some struggling for freedom, some struggling for safety. As a solemn testimony to that unbroken faith which binds the generations one to another, I sing this song, if it be your will. And yes, there is a moment we have to transcend the side we're on and understand that we all are creatures of a higher order. Here in Israel and the world around, perhaps also heaven and earth, we have to transcend the side we're on and understand we're on the same side. We're creatures of a higher order. I pray as we are about to end this Yom Kippur that we can hold on to the holy and deep moments we had last night and today to the reminders we got of who we truly are in our depths of who we are meant to be. That we can carry all of this as we leave this house of prayer and go back to the world out there and resume our daily lives. The world is the same as it was last evening, but we are not the same. God, let it be your will to forgive us, to make us well, to give us a better year, a year of life, of light, of grace, and of peace. I'd like to invite Matt Aarons to sing for us. If it be your will, if you want to sing with him, please do so.
it be your will If there is a choice Let the rivers fill And let the hills rejoice Let your mercy spill us well and draw us near and bind us tight all your children here in their rags of light in our to kill and in this night if it be your will if it be your will